Uh, you guys obviously had a lot of three and outs in that game, and other than one or two, it seemed like there was one or two drives in the second quarter. It seemed like you guys played really well. Um, what was what were some of the improvements you guys made? I guess this week. Um, I mean, I was happy to see some of the production on third down. You know, I thought we started the game really fast. You know, we had about three three and outs to start the game, and I just. You know, whether it was motions, whether it was communication, whether it was effort, whether it was tackling, you know, I thought, you know, to open the game that way was really impressive. I thought they answered the call of starting fast and did a really good job. I think as the game went on, you know, there were some sloppy moments that we got to shore up, but, um, you know, overall it was good to get, you know, good to get Akeem Dent back, you know, good to get Conrad involved, um, you know, just. Good to get some, you know, behind the line sack numbers there up front. So, you know, I thought overall, obviously a good win. Um, definitely some things that we could take from it. That's a, some things that we got to fix too and continue to move on for it. What What were you called for for the delay of game when it it went from I guess I think it was going to be second and seventeen or third yeah. and seventeen to second and seven? What was that call? Yeah. So, you know, when we communicate, especially when we're on defense at home, it's loud and. You know, I never want our guys to turn around when they're confirming that they're hearing the things they need to hear. So, you know, our, our secondary was talking to our linebackers, and they were patting their backside to let people know that we got the communication. And um, I guess one of their offensive linemen jumped, and they thought we were doing it in a way to get them to jump. Um, so I know Mike explained to him like, we do that about 50 times a game um, just on how we communicate. So I guess the interpretation, however they saw it, but I think that's how it all played out. Coach, you got some young people in the game early, linebacker and safety with Conrad. Uh, you know, t uh, can you talk about why you were, what you were looking to do there, um, whether it be rest players or get guys experience early? But uh, how did that affect you? Uh, because they're awfully young. Yeah. Well, go to Conrad first. You know, Conrad's somebody that I, I believe a lot in. I think he's got a lot of ability. He loves football, uh, plays with a lot of passion and energy. He's got really good skill set. Uh, we knew that when we recruited him. Uh, but everybody's on their different journey as far as the time. And, you know, I thought that week, that, that bye week, he really started to accelerate um, just his play. Um, it's always been there. Um, we're just looking for a little bit more consistency with how that looked. I thought he followed up with a good week of prep for Virginia Tech. And so, you know, sat down with Coach Sertan. We talked, and we knew we were going to get him in early. Um, even with the return of Akeem, you know, it's still about each individual. Um, and obviously, there's got to be opportunities, and he earned one. And so he went in there, and, you know, he's been doing some good things on special teams, but he really went in there and made an impact on defense. Um, and so, you know, we got to continue to develop him, continue to grow him, but um, the greatest reward is the opportunity to do more. And, you know, he continues to raise his play and his preparation, and those opportunities will continue to come. So I was proud of him to go in there and uh, excited to see his family after the game, see him have success. Yeah, Blake, you know, you know, Tatum had kind of a, um, a slow week, you know, just coming off that um, last game and, you know, just – you know, it was going to be kind of game time, what, how much he'd be able to give us. And so, you know, Blake is another one. We feel really confident about what it's going to look like for him. Um, you know, with Tatum's reps being really limited and really down on defense, to be honest with you. Uh, we knew Omar's reps would go up. Um, DJ and, and Kalen's reps would pretty much stay similar. And then we would just have to eat some of those reps, and Blake was the next man up. Um, and, you know, I think you – you can't replicate experience, you know, especially out there, especially in real time, you know. And so, you know, so I think we'll continue to see Blake in that development. You know, he's actually shown up on special teams in a really good way. Um, he's done some good things on kickoff cover and just continue to build things off of what Blake gave us. Syracuse offensive skill and talent, obviously very familiar with Garrett Schrader. You guys have played him a lot, but some of the other guys are somewhat new faces, it seems like. Yeah, it is. You know, Chris, we've, you know, we've, the last three years we played Syracuse, so I mean, we know Schrader really well. We've played against him three years in a row, and he's an ultra competitor, obviously big body, um, really good athlete. Um, you know, has played a lot of good football in our league now for multiple years. Um, you know, there's two of the offensive linemen we played against last year. Um, 
you know, the back was really the backup for Tucker, so obviously he didn't get as much. Um, but you know, definitely a, a team we're familiar with. Um, I know their offense coordinator moved on last year, but I think you know the guy that's calling plays now, and you know, obviously Coach Babers is probably very involved. So you know, there's a lot of similarities. You just try to peel through. You know, what's new, what's the same, um, but. You know, when they have a quarterback back there, and you know they've got a, they do have a talented group of skilled players, and um, you know, looking forward to diving into this week. And you know, it's good having history with them because you can go back. Um, but kind of new year, new teams, and looking forward to that. What, what the plan's going to be? Uh, I'll just be the officials guy this week. Uh, w what did Byron Turner do wrong? I assume he looked like he hit the quarterback just like Kalen hit. Clemson's quarterback, other than he didn't have the ball, but it was almost it was almost instantaneous after he got rid of the ball. What did he do wrong in that instance? And second part, is that one of the craziest interceptions you've ever seen just from a pure athletic standpoint? First question. So with Byron, I mean, I, you know, just, I, I'm an emotional person myself, but Mike deals with the officials, and I'm thank goodness he does. Um, and, you know, I just, I try to just go to the next play, and, you know, I, I think we have an interception, and I start hearing it's going to be reviewed. So I just think AZ might have stepped out of bounds. So I'm trying to get them back uh, to go back on the field. And when I heard it was a late hit, you know, I don't really look too much at it, you know, because there's not much I'm going to do about it. Obviously, I had a chance to kind of watch it post game, and you know, I'm just coaching Byron to continue to play hard, you know, because I thought he did, you know, and there was some wasted footwork early in the play, but just how we went and how we made a play and you know I, I mean I thought he did everything he was supposed to do on that play and you know Zaria I mean that was a I mean, he did a great job in the line of scrimmage kind of funneled the guy out of bounds and zone turned up and just an incredible play and but Zaria has got that in him I mean he's there's a reason why you use him in the way we do and dime in a corner and um, he's, he's definitely got that ability. It wasn't shocking to see him make that play. I've seen him make those catches before. Um, just wish it could have counted. When you talk about Conrad and his ability, um, I mean, he's, he didn't get a spring. Um, and I think he was lim limited a little bit during the fall camp. So how, what makes a guy like that avail? Is it's not just athletic ability. What makes a guy like that be able to, to earn playing time this quickly? I think as they go, you know, just the consistency, because we're trying to make practice as game-like as possible. That's the only chance to have a chance, because the emotions on game day and the environment, you know, up the emotions, and you're trying to create that intensity constantly, whether it's a Thursday walkthrough, whether it's a Friday pregame meeting, you know, you're always trying to put them in the moment. Um, in, you know, Conrad, just like any player that comes in the program, there's an adjustment that needs to go. I mean, the language changes, the expectations um, change, techniques, um, you know, all those things. And so, you know, he just, he needed time and he needed reps. And, you know, part of that building is him gaining trust with his teammates, you know, him gaining experience. And, you know, as a coach, when you say these are the steps you need to do in order for you to have more opportunities, well, when they do that, I'm going to be to my word and we're going to give them those opportunities. And we do them because that's the process of improvement that we know it's going to take for him to get going the game. And it's our job, even if he goes out there and doesn't have success, which he did, if he's doing everything right, we're going to continue and invest in that and um, give him opportunities, whether that's in the kick game or whether it's on defense. And, you know, um, I just think, you know, it's hard when you don't come in in the spring because you miss all that time. Um, but, you know, we've had it done before. Guys have been able to come in, and um, some guys matriculate a little bit quicker than others. Everybody's on their own journey, as we say. But um, I think Conrad continues to do what he's been doing. I think we'll see more of that type of play. If I could follow up on – so the play um, where he comes up on the swing pass, um, is that – it looked special to us, but like, is that routine? Is that just what he should be doing, or, or was there something special about that? I mean, it was part of the work that he knew, like that was him and Kalen's play to make. You know, there was going to be one blocker, and who that guy blocked was kind of up to him. Uh, but they both had the key work to trigger and go make the play based off the how it all played out with the back and the screen and all that stuff. So, um, what I love about him 
is he never broke stride. And he took as much grass as possible and he took straight direct lines and finished in a legal way and in a violent way. So, you know, it was a really good play. Looked good, didn't it? Thanks, Adam. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you guys. Yeah, appreciate it.